Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel. Happy New Year. Um, so glad to be back. And to start off this new year, I thought I'd sh show you guys my face and kind of show off my little Elena-inspired outfit that I mentioned back on the Vampire Diaries video that um, I also posted tonight. Uh, basically, this is meant to resemble Elena's outfit in episode 314 of the Vampire Diaries. And it's before the Michelson ball. She went with, her ne with Rebecca's necklace that was Elena's at the time. And her sweater. And I actually had the sweater before the episode aired, so uh, that was kind of surprising. I thankfully still had it, still fits, and it's really warm, so I thought, now is the time to wear it, because if I wear it on Halloween, everyone's just going to think, think I'm wearing my normal clothes. So there's that. So, uh, so let's get right to it. So I'm here to talk about the originals, episode 310, titled Ghosts of the Mississippi, which premiered Friday, January 29th, 2016, on The CW, A New Night. Um, but we got the double vampire block, so at least that's still good, right? And what an episode, guys. Oh my god. So, fair warning, though. I did have a few distractions, unavoidable distractions, during the episode. It's like, maybe the first 20 minutes, I'm like, I've caught, I've missed a few things. So if I don't mention them, then I do apologize. If I don't go into any detail, that's the reason. But hopefully I cover everything. But let's begin very quickly. Um, what is something new that we learned in this episode? Um, many things. So, last episode ended with Camille having slit her throat. We get the answer for that. Not only do we see Klaus's reaction to Camille's death, basically him trashing his room, room in an uproar, but it's cross-cut with, with a flashback, I'm thinking of one of his sessions with Cammy and it, they're talking about death and his lack of a reaction to death and she thinks the only reason that he surrounds himself around these immortals is because death affects him too hard if he's surrounded by humans all the time that always die it's going to take a toll on him so if he surrounds himself with vampires then death is not really uh, an uncommon thing since they always come back to life so that was brought up very fitting to the fact that he's now dealing with her death and then she suddenly wakes up and it's revealed through her own flashbacks that Aurora had compelled Cammy. I didn't catch the specifics. Again, it's one of those distraction moment things I couldn't avoid. But apparently she compelled her when she was holding her hostage at that a makeshift fight club place in the abandoned church. And then she had given Camille a vial of her blood, I believe, that she was supposed to take after something was um, fulfilled compulsion wise and then she's supposed to slit her throat so that does explain how she had she got the blood in her system we all thought she was going to be compelled anyways based on the rumors but we didn't know how or when she had gotten vampire blood in her system since she supposedly was always in klaus's um um vicinity after he rescued her from aurora so we got our answers for that so this whole episode was dealing with uh, transitioning Camille, I guess you can say. Her struggling with the decision of whether to transition or not. Ultimately, she didn't want to transition because her choice to die was taken away from her due to compulsion. So she at least wanted the choice to become a vampire or not. Which is very similar to episode 401 of Vampire Diaries when, Elena, when that same thing happened with Elena. Um, she was struggling with the idea of transitioning. She wasn't even going to go through with it, but then later on she decided that she would, which is basically what Cammy decided to do at the very end of the episode after thinking about what she, what good she could do as a vampire. So there's that whole bunch of journey and fighting until she got to that point. But another thing that happened in this episode was the fact that um, Tristan um, threatens Vincent with Finn, with Finn possessing him again. So Vincent either activates or does something to the medallion so that it can work when called upon so there's that and then he's taken as a strix prisoner only to be rescued by elijah who manages to grab finn's necklace which kind of puts vincent on the michelson side now thankfully so but that was another moment that i kind of drifting in and out unwillingly of course otherwise i'd be glued to the screen with this type of episode another thing that i didn't catch all the details for was the fact that um Haley and jackson were taken by the strix and guess who got killed? It ain't Haley. Apparently, Tristan rips Jackson's heart out and delivers it to Freya, Elijah, Klaus with a, a demanding note saying to um, 
bring these things to him, otherwise Haley's next to die. So, that's unfortunate. I wasn't even expecting that. I know some people hired her rumors, but Jackson is not really up there for me in, his, in regards to importance. But with that being said, his death was so surprising. I felt really bad how it happened. And it's just, yeah. And then when Haley's reaction to it, that was just, it was heartbreaking for sure. It's just, it's too much death. First, you you break the, you kill Cammy in the previous episode. And thankfully, she comes back in this episode. But since someone had died, you have to replace that death with Jackson. It's not like you have to replace the death. I'm just saying it just seemed to work out that way. So there's that. Haley's pissed, but she's still a hostage. So to retaliate against that, Michaelson's kidnap Aurora so that they can do a simple trade. So that they can do a trade. Haley and the medallion for Aurora. Um, so they set a meeting up for that, and uh, they actually pulled the wool over Tristan's eyes and managed to use his own plan against it, which was phenomenal. And I'm going to go right into the shocking moment of the episode. And there's not just one. One, Jackson's death was shocking. I wasn't expecting it at all. If anything, I thought if he was going to die, it would be at like the end of the season when you're questioning whether or not he's going to return in the next season, like that type of moment. But nope, um, he died. Or he was murdered, say that. Next shocker. It has to be like the biggest shocker though, but I had to mention the death. It was the fact that the medallion was used against Tristan. So that was a big shocker. Here we are thinking that he successfully got Aurora back only for it to be revealed that Aurora took the medallion from his pocket and then used it while he was still in the containment, the freight, I think it's the freighter container. And then there's that. So I'm thinking she was compelled to do that after she had woken up. But no. She walks right through the barrier. And then after a spell was done, it was revealed that it was actually Camille. And since she's not dead and she's not alive, she's in the middle, she's in transition, the barrier doesn't work on her because nothing dead or alive can pass through it. And she, since she's in limbo, she can walk through it. So that was so surprising was not expecting it at all that was like a huge twist so thrilled for the win in that one and thankfully the strix saw reason and didn't attack well they had words had to be said but still and the next uh shocker has to be camille's reaction to being a vampire now i'm gonna say this it was really similar to elena without her emotions vampire Elena without her emotions the whole description the whole high about it it def that brief moment where she was explaining what the blood felt like it remember remind me of how Rebecca explained it back in 308 on the vampire diaries when she was explaining about tasting blood for the first time to Elena and then I was reminded of episode 416 and 417 when Elena the first episodes of Elena being emotionless and just um, indulging herself in her vampire um, tendencies. So that's what has me thinking of Camille. And it just seemed the difference between in her was surprising. I wasn't expecting that much of a difference so quickly. It's like the most she tastes blood is like flipping of a behavior switch or something. So that was a surprise. Not as big as Tristan being in tune, but still a surprise. So I'd probably put one Tristan getting tricked two jackson's death three cammy's reaction to being a vampire so there's that okay so moving on if most uh or top favorite moments a uh, top three of uh, the fact that they tricked tristan is like the big one i wasn't expecting it at all i thought even though he did cross many lines in this episode i'm glad that he he was defeated and the way he did it and the fact that they're going to dump him at the bottom of the ocean like he like they did to Rebecca was like ironic for sure and I loved it so much so that was great um next favorite moment has to be Klaus and Camille throughout the whole episode and it's because it's not it's because of their stances towards each other here last episode we had them pretty much confessing their feelings for each other and actually kissing and taking things to the next step but in this episode 
when she realizes that she's been forced into this position where she has to choose to either feed and live or starve and die she wants the choice to not live a vampire she doesn't want to become a monster she would rather die as the, the version of herself that she's proud of being not the version of herself that's going to turn into a monster because she's a vampire which causes a belief she'll do because he thinks she won't succumb to the darkness she thinks she will so anyways the whole time though what i really like is the fact that klaus isn't afraid to tell her that he leads her he doesn't want her to leave him yes they're both they're all selfish in a way because it's all about him and not wanting to lose her but the fact that klaus is even telling her to begin with is a huge step which is what i liked and i like the fact that camille isn't caving to klaus's pleas to stay with her what i liked is that even though camille decided to not go with the transition and i knew that was gonna last long but still the fact that she stayed with that choice from the beginning to end and didn't have Klaus influence her decision that's what I liked about it she chose and she stuck to what she wanted and yeah and I like that and then at the end when she talks to Vincent she logically thinks of the pros and cons of continuing on as a vampire or not so there's that I really like the dynamic and the Mostly I just like the reaction of Klaus because you definitely see in this episode how much he cares for Camille. He's desperate to get revenge against the Dumartans. He's desperate for her to transition so that she doesn't leave him. The one person he thinks who understands and doesn't really judge her, I think. So uh, it was pretty powerful, I thought. Um, next favorite moment has to be Elijah's speech towards the Strix. He uses logic to tell them there's no point in attacking them and following Tristan's um, uh, personal vendetta when he's the one who sired them all and yeah and they're stronger even though some of them could rival theirs maybe but not all of them so I really like they actually saw reason and stepped back is this the last we'll see of the Strix? probably not but at least for now we're good um my most peeved moments of the episodes let's move on to that um it first one has to be jackson the reason i wrote jackson is because i didn't expect him to die i didn't expect it to happen the way it did but it just yeah i don't know it just it, it maybe it was just too surprising or i wasn't expecting it or maybe it was just too heartbreaking to see happen and i'm it's not like I hate the character, and I knew that in order for Elijah and Haley to ever happen or be Endgame, then Jackson would have to die at some point. And I knew he was never going to turn into a vampire f to be with Haley forever. He just wanted to be a wolf and stay a wolf and live out his normal lifespan. So at some point, Haley was going to lose lose him. But I don't even think they celebrated their one year wedding anniversary. I don't think they did. So that's kind of sad, but yeah, I think it was premature for him to go. I'll say that. Um, next peeve, um, it has to be the fact that Aurora escaped, and they think it's because of Lucian. And it kind of irritates me that we haven't seen Lucian in a while. He wasn't in last episode. Last time we saw him was um, after Klaus told Aurora that he was that she was nothing to him in three hundred eight, and then we haven't seen Lucian since only a little mentions of him here and there so the fact that he helped aurora out is kind of it. i get why but then i feel like yeah you're not really on class's good side anymore if you do that so there's that um yeah that's about it so what will i remember most about this episode definitely klaus and camille all that stuff tristan being trapped wonderful as well and yeah that's pretty much it um, so, random questions. Um, and the prophecy was brought up by Freya today, and she was actually concerned over the fact that this showdown that was going to happen between Tristan before he was trapped, she thought that that might be the f what has the prophecy coming true. So, my question is, um, are we... Well, how much of the prophecy has truly been fulfilled? We know that Rebecca 
the whole family, the fallen by family counts with Rebecca being taken out by Elijah. So there's that. So it's just um, friend and foe for Klaus and Elijah. But to what extent do they have to be uh, to have fallen in order for it to count? And also, is it possible to have the prophecy apply to the sire trinity, that is Tristan, Aurora, and Lucian? Because um, couldn't um, what happened to Tristan today kind of count as family, the portrayal of family for him? I mean, he technically, in the moment, it was kind of like Aurora was um, um, defeating Tristan with the whole fall by family thing. Of course, we later realized it was Cammy, but that could be a simple speculation or a simple stipulation in a prophecy that you wouldn't have seen. You would have automatically assumed it was Aurora because you see her face, even though it was a disguised face. So there's that as well. But is it possible that the prophecy could be applied to the Sire Trinity since for a century the Sire Trinity believed themselves to be the Michelsons? So I'm wondering if that's a possibility. Also, next question. Should we really be worrying about the fate of this prophecy? Because uh, if I'm correct, if my calculations are correct, they only have a year until this prophecy is fulfilled and the supposed fall of the Michelsons, right? So that's technically going to fall right into the end of the season. So either the Michelsons live on to see season four, and if they live on, that means the prophecy um, didn't come true. Or the prophecy comes true, they die by the end of season three, and all vampires cease to exist. Which means all the vampires on the Vampire Diaries would die. But we have been seeing flash forwards three years from now. And they're all alive. So that's assuming that Klaus is still alive, since they all belong to the Klaus's sire line. So, with that... Would that be a huge hint to the fact that the Michelsons, or at least Klaus, lives past this year of the prophesized doom? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on it, especially if that is the case. Then I, then we got nothing to worry about. Maybe a few people, but at least Klaus is still going to be alive because everyone else in the Vampire Diaries is supposedly still alive in three years in their universe. So there's that. But just clarification, if you th think it's the same thing along those lines, let me know for sure. But it'll just be a huge relief off my shoulders if that is the case. And I'm wondering if they have to take notice of that, right? The writers have to be fully aware that that is what the show is doing on the Vampire Diaries when they state such a prophecy like this on the originals. It, they just have to know. And I'm wondering if that's just a, something to dangle over our heads to give us false hope. I hope not. That would suck. Yeah, those so suck for sure. But uh, yeah, uh, what else? I just had another question. Shoot. Okay, I'll just go with the one I had written though. But um, with Cammy being a vampire, do you think that she's gonna turn out to be like Caroline, becoming a better version of her human self and being uh, adjusting quite well, or will she be like Elena, who really struggled at the very beginning to accept? this new version of her, and she really had to go to the dark side before coming back and finding an equal balance between the two. Which path do you think Camille will take? So there is that question. And seriously, I am blanking on the last question I just thought of. Shoot. Hold on one moment. I'm going to pause this and maybe hope I think of it. Okay, I remembered it. It has to do with Freya. Okay, so... Um, is Freya still under that sleeping curse that she, that um, connected her to Dahlia and stated that she lived out lived a year and then she'd sleep for ninety nine years and then wake up again to live a year and then ninety nine years of sleep? Is Freya still under that? Because uh, I believe it's coming up to the year point almost. Wasn't it episode um, twelve of last year that she woke up from her ninety nine year old slumber? And if that's the case, does that mean that she's gonna have to? Is she gonna be? falling asleep again and forced to for 99 years is does that still apply to Freya or was that canceled the moment Dahlia was killed let me know in the comments below I can't believe that crossed my mind and then it completely left me at the moment but I've been wondering about that for a really long time because they stressed upon the fact that she has 
lived a year and then she slept for 99 of them to um, conserve power and strength and build in size while still kind of maintaining immortality in a sense without becoming a vampire. So um, there's that. Also with Freya though, the last time we saw her actual immortality at work was when Dahlia was still alive. So now that Dahlia is dead, does Freya still have that immortality or she or could she actually still die and be mortal? Let me know in the comments below. I can't believe I, I completely forgot about those questions before. So I'm uh, moving on to predictions quickly. Um, so, da, 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 da. what did I write? Oh yeah, uh, based off of the promo, uh, we get Klaus having to reign in a vampire Cammy who is really taking her new life in stride. Definitely reminds me of oh, emotionless Elena from 416, 417, um, not holding anything back. So we're definitely going to see that version of Camille and see how Klaus handles it and tries to um, help her not commit acts that she wouldn't normally do as a human or would have thought of doing as a human. So um, there's that. Um, Prediction wise, there's not predictions actually. Um, one of the, the syn episode synopses that was released mentioned Cole returning, and that is um, Nathaniel's version of Cole. So if you want to check out which episode that is, you can check out my Tumblr below. Link for that because I'm definitely not telling you right now. Also mentioned as well, we do have a, a confirmed crossover with the Vampire Diaries happening episode 14 for both seasons. Um, so yeah, that's in a few weeks from now, so apparently Stefan's coming to town, so we get to see the old chums of Klaus and Stefan, um, getting together and, you know, sharing a few things. Uh, I hear Caroline's gonna be brought up between the two, so that shall be interesting for all you Claroline fans out there for sure, and any other predictions that I have. Oh yeah, no wait, that was for Vampire Diaries. Shoot, should have mentioned that over there. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently we're going to see Davina again, and she's magicless now, right? Or without magic, so we're going to see how she's going to be doing. Um, I don't think that would be very good, um, in a sense, although it would be kind of like, um, karma, since the whole time she was with Marcel acting as the last Harvest Girl, she was basically stopping all these other witches from performing magic, and now she doesn't have the ability to do that, so there is that. But any other predictions? Uh, nope. That's about it. So, uh, that's all I have to say about the episode. What did you guys think? Uh, was what you expected. It definitely was not what I was expecting. And it was definitely worth the holiday wait. Although, during that wait, I wouldn't have thought so. But everything that happened whole, blew my mind for sure. Like, boom. So, yeah. Let me know what you thought about it uh, in the comments below. Thoughts, theories, questions, your own cop observations, your own theories, any of that stuff comment below love to hear about it spread the word around let's keep this conversation going let's talk about this and also don't forget to like this video thumbs up please and subscribe to my channel check out my other videos if you haven't done so already since the last time i posted for the originals i've started a few more playlists um started for the 100 legends of tomorrow and shadow hunter so if you're a fan of any of those three i have a few videos for that if you want to check out and yeah also mentioned before tumblr if you want any of that news whether it's promos sneak peeks um episode synopses stills quotes gifs any of that tumblr link down below i've organized it as best i can so hopefully it's a quick find for you guys and yeah also if you want a more detailed recap of the episode a play by play by me as i watched the episode the first time with my own in the moment thoughts Check out my live journal entry. The link for that is below as well. Um, it might be helpful. And then you can actually kind of see where I kind of was distracted and couldn't pay that much attention or because I wasn't able to find it elsewhere to watch afterwards, unfortunately. So there's that. And that's it. So thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. You won't always see my face. It just, with it being the new year, I wanted to welcome you Originals fans with me and my Elena attire to start off the new year. So it's definitely back to audio next week because it will take forever to render this and upload it. 
And thankfully, it is Saturday tomorrow, so there's a, that um, saving grace right there. So, yeah. So, this is Mel. Just wishing you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. And I hope you come back next week to see what I have to say about the next episode. It's definitely going to be one hell of a ride coming up. So, till then, bye for now.